Today I'm going to be sharing with you the process of rendering lard in a crock pot. We are Alex and Elena, a couple in our mid-twenties working towards financial independence and self-sustainability. Follow our journey as we grow, build, fix, and learn the skills we need to get us there. So before we get started, let's talk a little bit about lard. If you choose to render your own lard, you want to make sure that you're getting the fat from a pasture raised animal. It's really important that you do so because any type of antibiotic or hormone that has been injected into that animal is going to be in the fat itself. Most of those things are fat soluble, so they are stored in the fat of the animal. There are two types of lard. There's leaf lard and then there's regular lard. Leaf lard comes from the visceral fat on the pig, and this has a taste that's not as piggy as regular lard. So this is the type of lard that people use in pastries and when they're baking. Regular lard is great for sauteing any type of vegetable, for making fried chicken, anything like that where the porky taste won't hinder the recipe. Regardless of the type of fat that you have, you will render the lard in the same exact fashion. So today I'm going to be rendering the lard that I got from the quarter pig that I purchased from a local farm. I'm actually not sure of where the fat came from on the pig itself, but based on the size of the package that I received, I would guess that it's just regular pig fat. After filming this video, I made some pie crust with the lard that I had rendered and it actually turned out really, really good and it didn't really have any porky taste at all. So I was really happy with the results and I'm glad to know that even the regular lard can work with pastries as well. Whenever you take your fat out of the freezer, it is going to be frozen solid. I recommend letting it defrost a little bit so that it's easier to cut. Uh, when I first did this, I didn't let it defrost and it was super, super hard to cut. So I had to end up leaving it and coming back to it later. Now what I have here are chunks that I already separated from my initial package. So I went ahead and processed some of the lard already and now I'm going to do my second batch. So I put it back in the freezer when it was in big chunks like this until I was ready to start the second batch. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're going to cut this up into small pieces. If you see here, this is already a little bit defrosted. It doesn't have to be 100% completely defrosted because it will be easier to cut through whenever it's slightly frozen, but it has some parts which are really squishy and I can just pull off. When you're cutting up the lard, you wanna cut it into the tiniest pieces possible because it will then render the lard quicker than if they were in bigger pieces. One thing I definitely recommend is that while you're dealing with the pig fat to put on an apron. So I realized halfway through that I didn't have an apron on, but this is gonna help you prevent from getting grease on any clothing that you're wearing. So I already have a crock pot full of pig fat, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this one started. I'm going to set it on low for four hours. It may take longer than that, but I'm just gonna do that as a starter and I'm gonna come back and check it about every hour or so. So even after filling up a whole crock pot with pig fat, I still have half of a pot left to cut up. So I'm gonna have to get a second crock pot ready. You don't have to use a knife to cut up all of the pig fat. You can also use kitchen shears. I find that the kitchen shears work a lot better with the softer pieces than using a knife. So I have my second crock pot ready. I'm gonna go ahead and set this one on low as well. And we will check back in about an hour to see how everything is rendering. After about one hour, this is what the rendering lard looks like. So I would recommend giving it a stir. You'll see that there's some liquid already forming at the bottom. So it's good to get, give it a stir so you don't have any pieces sticking to the side of your crock pot and burning. You don't have to use a crock pot to render your lard. You could use a Dutch oven or you could render it on the stove, but that requires a little bit more attention than a crock pot. I like to be able to set it and forget it and go do other things while I wait for it to render. All right, we're at the two hour mark and you can see that the pig fat has cooked down a lot more. 
and that some of the pieces are starting to turn brown. So we are definitely cooking. It's only been about 45 minutes since we last looked at this, but you can see that the pig fat is getting pretty brown. And so I wanna make sure that I'm stirring it regularly so that nothing sticks to the sides of the crock pot. You'll find that as the lard renders, the closer you get to it finishing, the more you're going to have to stir it. So just make sure that you're keeping an eye on it and so that nothing burns or gets stuck to the side. Now we are at about the four hour mark. The rendering lard does not look much different than it did an hour ago. So I would imagine that it's probably gonna take at least two more hours. You can tell that it still has more time if you look at the pieces themselves and if they still look pretty white they'll eventually get brown and crispy. After five hours, my white crock pot that's full of the lard is finished. That crock pot has a tendency to cook at a higher temperature than my other one that we've been looking at together. And so I'm gonna go ahead and strain that so that I can separate the solid from the liquids. So to do this, you can either use a regular colander with some cheesecloth, or if you have one like I do where it's already has the really, really tiny holes, you can just use this. Now I like to put it into a bowl. Some people will pour it directly through the strainer into their jars, but I prefer to get it into a bowl and then ladle it into the jars. Here's the finished product. You can tell that it is done rendering because the pieces become really, really sticky and they also have a browned hue to them. Now you have your solid separated from the beautiful liquid. These solid pieces are called cracklings. Some people will let them cool down and eat them as a snack. I personally do not like them and so I gave a couple to my dog but other than that they'll probably end up in the trash for us. To get the liquid into the jars I use a ladle and the funnel that I use for canning. My smaller crock pot ended up taking about six to seven hours to render the lard completely. I ended up turning it up soon after the four hour mark to the high setting because I was just getting a little bit too impatient waiting for it on the low setting. Once your lard cools, it will turn to this off-white color. The lighter the color, the less porky flavor. So if yours turns out to be darker than what you see here, that doesn't matter. It will still work. You can saute with it and fry chicken with it, but you may not want to use it in pastries. Thank you so much for joining me today. Let me know how you use your lard because I have a lot of it. I've been considering using it to make some soap. So let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Make sure to click the thumbs up if you like this video. Also make sure to check us out on Instagram and Facebook at Mason Dixon Acres. See you next time.